Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Produce Moms Podcast. My name is Lori Taylor. I'm proud to be the host, and I am very excited and proud to welcome today's guests. We have two gentlemen uh, hailing from Monterey Mushrooms. Monterey Mushrooms is the national leader in mushrooms, and they are always locally grown. I love that about this brand. They have been a Produce Moms brand partner for several years now, and we are welcoming Bruce Knobelock. He is the vice president of of marketing and product development. And we are also welcoming Mike O'Brien, the vice president of sales and marketing. And he might just have a little bit of a retirement announcement too in today's show, but oh, he's been such a legend in the industry. We couldn't do the show without him. So gentlemen, welcome to today's show. Thank you for being our guests. Thank you for agreeing to uh, have a great compelling discussion today about what's happened with my mushrooms amidst this COVID-19 climate. Glad to be here, Lauren. Very glad. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. So since this is audio only, we will need to do uh, match the voice with the name. So Bruce, say hello. Hello, everybody. (laughs) Thank you. And Mike. Hello. Awesome. Okay. So uh, we've established who's who now. And gentlemen, I would love for you to tell us just a little bit about Monterey Mushrooms and the roles you play at the company. Uh, Mike, we'll start with you because like I said, you've, uh, you've got some exciting announcements and new beginnings on your horizon. Thank you, Laurie. Well, I'm Michael Grant, Vice President of Sales and Marketing, and I've been with Monterey Mushrooms since November 10th, 2014, after 42 years in retail at Schnuck Markets. I moved over from running the produce department at Schnuck Markets, which I ran for 14 years, to Monterey Mushrooms, who was one of our, our great suppliers and I became the vice president of sales and marketing. So that's a role that I play, but it, what, what is really interesting about this transition that I had in 2014, in the year 2000, I replaced another icon in the industry, at stuck markets, Mr. Bruce Knobloch. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. Okay, so, wow. Now Bruce, introduce yourself and tell us more about your role. That's amazing. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bruce Knobloch, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing and Product Development for Monterey. And I've been with uh, Monterey Mushrooms uh, a little over four years now. And uh, uh, and my experience uh, goes back to uh, starting to uh, work for Schnook Markets in 1974 bagging groceries. I spent uh, a number of years there. The last 10, I was the Director of Produce and Floral. Uh, came out to California, and shortly after that, Mike, uh, 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 the company made a great choice and moved Mike into uh, the role that I had. That's great. Oh, I love that. Never burn a bridge, right, guys? That's like, right. Yeah. Never burn a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> We've been great friends for years, and it's so, it's so special to be able to work with Bruce for the last four and a half years of Monterey Mushrooms. And as you mentioned, I'm transitioning again into retirement at the end of this month. So looking forward to spending more time with the family. Oh, yeah. Well-deserved. Well-deserved. So let's talk a little bit about who you all serve at Monterey Mushrooms. I mean, there are so many stakeholders in the produce supply chain or our value chain. And we, you know, I think really the end consumers, folks that are following along and identifying as part of the Produce Moms community, um, you know, they're realizing that more because so much of our industry became part of mass media during this pandemic. So tell us a little bit more about who you serve, uh, you know, and, and break down the different stakeholders. So uh, Bruce, we'll, we'll kick this off with you, if you don't mind. Well, well thanks, Lori. Ultimately, we, we service the consumer. Uh, mm-hmm. That's uh, what we do. And that's what we think about uh, pretty much 24-7. Um, mushrooms, uh, mushrooms grow, and uh, 
We are work very, very closely with a broad distribution network, uh, retailers, uh, wholesalers, food service distributors and operators, uh, and also manufacturers. Um, a lot of the mushrooms that we grow are not perfect, but they're a perfect uh, item for an ingredient. So, uh, but ultimately we are, uh, what we grow, what we ship, what we pack uh, is ultimately gonna end up at a, in, on a consumer's uh, table or mm -hmm. being served in that consumer in a restaurant. So um, we, we love our supply chain. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that mindset too. You know, I hope that all of the, all of the consumers who are listening, all the other produce moms out there, you have to feel good when you hear that coming from, you know, that, that farmer level, that seed level. Uh, it is definitely, it's definitely great to know that the consumer is who you view as the, the ultimate customer, uh, which is really the mindset of everyone in produce. Uh, so that's, that's great to hear. Um, so, Mike, you've had a storage career. I mean, both of you gentlemen have. And, uh, Mike, how has COVID-19 changed consumer behaviors? I have read in the trade journals that there's been a spike in certain commodities and other commodities haven't, you know, boded so favorably. Uh, everything I've read has been, has been uh, pointing to that, hey, this is this has really brought consumers back to the mushroom category. We're selling more mushrooms. Uh, Tell us anything that you would like to share as it relates to consumer behavior in this COVID-19 pandemic. Well, it definitely is true that mushrooms have grown at retail, and, and that's the caveat here is at retail, because as we all know, the food service segment has been kicked in the gut. And if you're a restaurant operator, if you're a food service distributor, you're having some challenges right now. But in the retail sector, the consumer is purchasing more mushrooms. And, and the question is, is why? I mean, the IRA data, the, the Nielsen data all speaks to that. Produce sales are up approximately, depending on which one you look at, about 11%. But mushrooms are running ahead of it. Now, this is since the COVID-19 started. Mushrooms are running up about 24%. So the consumer, as you know, because the, the, the retailer has restricted the capacity of shoppers in their stores and they've restricted hours and we're all socially distancing from each other. They've spread out their purchases throughout the week or two week period. So they're shopping less often, but they're buying more when they're shopping. So they are buying more mushrooms than they have in the past. Now, a lot of it is speculation. There's been surveys and, and a lot of anecdotal evidence to say that, well, obviously there's no competition for the retailers in the restaurants. So that business has gone to retail. More people are cooking at homes, planning meals. I hear a lot of people that are gaining weight during this 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 challenging time period, but also I think that that's not necessarily true. More people are in the into health. So as you're planning your meals and you're staying home, you want to eat better. You want you want to get what you had at the restaurant. So you're planning your meals and cooking more, which really plays into the mushroom category. The other thing that has happened in produce and mushrooms is there's a little concern about buying bulk product. Mm. And, and that makes sense. I don't think that there's a food safety concern per se, but the concern is, is that as you're shopping at the stores and socially distancing from people that the, the bulk produce might, might be something you would be concerned about. It really isn't something that you should be concerned about because obviously we all should be washing our produce at home anyway. Right. Uh, but that has happened. So it's going to take some time for the, the consumer to feel more comfortable as they get back out and as we reopen our, our economy, which, which is going to happen very slowly. So, so that's just in a nutshell, but things have changed. It, it's, it's been good, somewhat disruptive, but good for retail produce sales, but not good for overall produce sales. Overall produce sales are down because right. of the loss of the food service segment. 
Oh yeah. And no one, no one loves and prioritizes our products like, uh, like the chefs, you know, and there's, there is still a learning curve for home cooks to become fruit and fresh fruit and vegetable savvy. I mean, the testament, the, the sustainability and growth of the produce moms is a testament to that. There is that education barrier. Uh, and that's one reason why our brand partners like Monterey mushrooms are so important to consumers. I mean, not only are you able to use our platform as a megaphone for whether it's, you know, educating people on how to select store and serve, so, select store and serve mushrooms or your sustainability practices. But uh, we're really breaking down one of the biggest barriers, in my opinion, as it relates to our purchasing behavior. And it's simply, uh, we buy the same five or six items every time we go grocery shopping because those five or six items represent what we know, what we're familiar with. We know how to select store and serve those. Um, so it's, it's great that you have partnered with us as well as all of your other consumer facing marketing that you do. And gosh, I highly recommend that anyone uh, listening today, please engage and connect with Monterey Mushrooms on their social media channels. You are going to learn so much. One of my very favorite publications that they've ever done is a craft beer and mushroom pairing guide. So if that doesn't give you a little insight into how savvy and cool these people are, uh, now you know. And they are uh, there's just so much that you're going to learn. Uh, they've taught me a lot about the mushroom category. So thank you so much for sharing that insight with us, Mike. And Bruce, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more now about about the rise of plant-based diets. I mean, mushrooms just, they're paramount in that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've, we've always called portobello mushrooms kind of the original meat alternative. Um, you know, for years and years, Portobellas have been served on on um, uh, in menus on on restaurant uh, menus and and at people's homes. They're the perfect item to grill with. Um, mushrooms themselves, the the natural umami uh, flavor that that comes from mushrooms when you're when you're eating them fresh or 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 cooking with them, sautéing them, uh, dicing them, and adding adding that product to to meat. Uh, can add an, an incredible uh, a nutrition boost to any meal that you're making. Um, if you're adding it to lasagna, you're making burgers, whatever, you're adding a product that has no fat, uh, low salt, uh, and just good base, basic nutrition. Um, and uh, I think that's why uh, mushrooms have had such a center of the plate, so to speak, uh, view of this plant-based uh, movement. Um, yeah. Yeah. That. And I'll tell you what, you know, I mean, the blended project, the blended burger project and uh, just the concept of blending mushrooms into your meats is a great way for people that aren't necessarily living plant based, but they want to eat more plants. All of the flexitarians like me out there. Um, and also, hey, the struggle is real with all of us that have kids. You know, we want our we want our children to eat all of these fruits and vegetables that we have come to, you know, appreciate and 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 desire with our with our palates. But uh, there are certain there are certain items in the produce department that can be a challenge. And for me, mushrooms was one of them. And it was not necessarily the flavor; it was the texture for my kids. So when I started blending the mushrooms into our you know bolognese sauce for pizza night or pattying it into ground beef when we had hamburgers, it was, it was a no brainer. They, they could not even tell. And I had so much, I, I love that they were getting the nutrition, but there's also a lot of, uh, there's a budget uh, component here. The mushrooms are, you know, they save you money. You can, you can really spread out the meal and have a heartier dish. Uh, and you're paying the mushroom price, not the meat price. Um, and you're getting all the benefits from the plant-based diet. So you can't, uh, you really just can't beat it. And if you have not uh, tried that in your household, you must, because I promise you it is foolproof. I, I've tricked my, I've got my son, Joe is 12. My son, Mac is 10 and my husband's 40 and not a single one of them know that every time we have, <laughs> every time we have a spaghetti night, uh, they're eating mushrooms. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, it works. And, uh, thank you for sharing that. And I just, I, I have to echo it and also get people thinking it, incorporate them even when it's not a vegetarian meal. And beyond that, uh, let's talk about uh, vitamin D 
because Monterey Mushrooms has a really unique product line. And with you focusing on product development as well as marketing, I know you're heavily involved in this. Uh, at the start of the new year, as part of our uh, healthy, healthy new year, new year, new you messaging. We worked with Monterey mushrooms to promote your vitamin D mushrooms. Explain to our listeners today a little bit more about that product line specifically and just mushrooms and vitamin D. Well, mushrooms are an incredibly interesting product. Uh, one, they're not fruit, they're not vegetable, they're fungi. And, um, uh, they have such an incredible, body of nutrition in the, in that little button mushroom uh, that I think, um, you know, we're all going to be excited. The research that's happening and is going to be coming out in the next handful of years is going to show the mushroom is even more, has more power, power and nutrition in it than ever before. One of the things that we've known for a long time is that um, vitamin D or that mushrooms will convert uh, sunlight to uh, vitamin D. Uh, that's just a natural occurrence uh, that, that occurs with mushrooms and sun. Uh, Monterey years ago worked with uh, the USDA in developing an ability to create a uh, process to where we're able to uh, uh, provide that to, to expose the mushrooms uh, to uh, a, a version of light that empowers that mushroom to convert the ergosterol that's inherent in the mushroom into vitamin D. And vitamin D for, I know many of you, your, your listeners will know this, uh, vitamin D is critically important to uh, help the body absorb calcium. And the vitamin D is, go is going to enable, you know, lower the risk of osteoporosis um, it, it has the ability to enhance your overall immune system, helps you manage your blood sugar. And one of the things that the research is starting to show is that it, it really helps with concentration and memory. Um, all just incredibly positive things. So um, our farms were able to produce vitamin D. We do uh, do this on a number of our uh, products that we sell. Uh, and uh, two thirds of a cup of sliced mushrooms or just five medium button mushrooms can provide um, 10 micrograms of vitamin D, which is 50% of the RDA that uh, is recommended for, for us. So wow. that's, that's just an incredible uh, um, uh, nutrient fact with mushrooms. Right. right. No, it's great. Super incredible fact. And I love to hear uh, any about any vitamin, mineral, nutrient uh, within foods that helps with boosting immunity right now. It's just so important. Um, thank you for sharing that. And Mike, let's, let's kind of wrap things up now, guys, with uh, I'd love for both of you to, to share some any final final thoughts, you know, things that you definitely want consumers to know about the mushroom category or take away from today's broadcast. So, Mike, we'll start with you on that, and then Bruce, we'll swing the mic back over to you. Okay. Well, one thing I'd like the audience to think about is is white mushrooms versus brown mushrooms. Many people think about the mushroom category being about white button mushrooms, and Bruce talked about portobellas, but a portobello is a grown baby bella or crimini mushroom. And, and so crimini mushrooms, baby bella mushrooms are, are growing, uh, a growing segment of our category. Uh, every year we sell more browns percentage wise to whites, although whites is still primarily what we sell. And, and from a culinary standpoint, they're more flavorful, they're, they're nuttier flavor and they make great, great, great meals. Uh, so think about the trend to go to the brown mushroom as opposed to the white mushrooms. Technically, they're the same mushroom, Agaricus bisporicus. I like to even say that, Agaricus bisporicus. I, it sounds like I'm really smart, but it really is just a, a <laughs> mushroom. It's the same mushroom, white versus brown. So think about more brown mushrooms in your diet. And then we also grow organic mushrooms. The organic mushroom is growing in popul popularity also. And it seems that with this whole COVID-19 
the organic category is growing by leaps and bounds and then speculation is, is that's because the millennials who spend a lot of their money in the food service segment are now shopping at retail more often and buying more organic mushroom because that is that is the choice that they make. So organics and brown mushrooms or baby bells are something that I'd like the audience to to try and try in their their healthy diet also. Awesome. Thank you. Well, Bruce, any closing thoughts from you for today's show? I mean, I definitely want to thank you both for being part of our broadcast today and and helping to, uh, you know, come on and kind of share the, the stories from the front lines as it relates to the consumer behaviors and purchasing data and trends during this COVID-19 environment. And I, you know, I really appreciate the insights that you both have shared about Monterey mushrooms, as well as reminding folks that, you know, hey, well, while things might have gone really well at retail, there was still a, a, just a crippling loss to our industry as it relates to food service. Um, And we, we wish everyone in this whole supply chain, the grocery retailers, the food service operators, the service professionals, just first of all, thank you for staying open and your dedication to fresh produce during this time and also best wishes to everyone as we work towards that uh, reopening of, of the economy. So Bruce, that being said, you get the final word. (laughs) So yeah. (laughs) Uh, one thing I would love for you to incorporate in your closing remarks, I want to make sure that all of our listeners today know how to store the mushrooms at home. Well, the best way to store mushrooms is to, uh, when, when you get them home, uh, uh, the, the quickest thing to do is get them in the refrigerator. Um, just like any fresh produce, if it's, uh, uh, the, the sooner it's uh, kept in the refrigerator, the better. If you're planning to use them right away, there's really not a whole lot you need to do. If you're gonna plan to hang on to them for you know, several days, uh, an, an option that I, I know a lot of people uh, swear by is to take the mushrooms out of the original package, uh, put them in a paper bag, and put them in your refrigerator. Um, uh, that's, uh, but if you take the product and just put it in the till that you uh, bought it at, at the store and put it directly in the refrigerator, uh, the cold chain is one of the important, important things to shelf life. So I'd highly, highly recommend that. Um, and final words from, from my perspective, Lori, would be, uh, I really wanna uh, share my thanks uh, to the Monterey uh, team. Uh, we've got uh, 4,000 employees uh, in North America that uh, literally work, uh, have been working uh, through some pretty stressful times uh, during this COVID-19. Uh, um, we've had an incredible uh, team effort in keeping our, our of our employees safe, uh, keeping everyone focused on on providing a healthy, nutritious food um, to our customers and therefore to to all of your um, uh, consumers. And I just want to share my uh, profound thanks and gratitude to all of them for the effort that they've been putting in. Thank you so much for that. And Mike, you know what? I'm not going to leave you hanging. Of course, you get the opportunity to sign off as well. Um, but thank you again to both of you gentlemen for being here today. And and Mike, please, you actually are the one who gets to sign us off from the show. Well, well, well thank you, Lori, to, the, to you and to the produce moms and everybody in the audience and all of our great mushroom consumers. Up. I, I love what Bruce said about our, our teammates at Monterey Mushrooms. It's a great company, although I'm retiring. I have, leave a lot of great friends there, including our, our owner, Shaw Kazemi. Uh, what a great man he is. Uh, I do want to mention, and you said it more yourself, is we have to think about our food service partners right now. And although things are fine in retail, although I don't think that the retail people are happy because everything's been so disruptive, there's a lot of our partners out there that are really challenged financially right now. And as a as a mushroom industry, as a produce industry, we need to do everything we can to help them uh, come back when, whenever it is possible to come back. So we're looking for things to get back to whatever normal will be. 
Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a produce mom in you because there's a produce mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.